r slash entitled parents, episode 26. M tries to ruin her daughter's wedding. First time posting. Please forgive any mistakes. Buckle up, this is a long one. This just happened about 11 days ago during my stepdaughter's SD wedding slash reception, with the M being her mother. M has been an M4 as long as I have known her, 20 years, but it's almost as if she was biding her time, waiting for this day to shine as the M she truly is. For context, this woman has cheated on asterisk EVERY single man she's ever had a significant relationship with. When SD was planning the wedding, she was considering having four of the men in her life who have had a major impact take turns walking her down the aisle. M said, you can't do that. It will make me look bad. Like, bitch, you did that yourself. This is how delusional this woman is. Anyway, on to the story. Or rather, five mini stories that happened throughout the day. Pre-ceremony, I sat in the left side front row, aisle seat, empty space to my left, and my son next to that space. My hubby, SD's father, was walking SD down the aisle, and I planned to move into the empty space, so he could sit on the aisle seat, after giving away the bride. As soon as I moved over, M came out of nowhere, and plopped her giant, but down in the aisle seat. I didn't want to make a scene during SD's wedding, so I just let it go, but I wanted to push her off the seat, and tell her to get lost. She said, asterisk they asterisk told me to sit here. There was no asterisk they asterisk, and nobody told her to sit there. Between the ceremony and the reception is when the professional photographs were taken. It took more than an hour. Not surprisingly, SD's one year old son started to get impatient and hungry. M set him in a high chair at her table and gave him a tray full of watermelon. What's wrong with this, you ask? The boy had been the ring bearer so was needed for some of the photographs, and he was still wearing his white dress shirt. SD was asterisk asterisk livid asterisk asterisk when the boy was brought over for his photos and was covered in bright pink stains. Because M is notorious for making things needlessly difficult, SD didn't want her involved in any of the wedding planning, including but not limited to decorating. The night prior to the wedding, SD set up the reception area exactly how she wanted it, so it was ready for the big day. A table near the dance floor included a rustic tree with photos hanging from it of loved ones who had passed and thus could not join the couple for their day. SD specified that the memorial table was to be kept clear of any other items so that the loved ones would be the focus. While the couple was having their photographs taken, M began her meddling. She removed a honeymoon fun box from the gift slash cards table and set it up on the memorial table, along with the leftover party favors, cheesy little foam camouflage can coozes. Can. Coozes. On the memorial table. SD's dad and I couldn't keep quiet over this one and let SD know what M had done. SD turned to me, once again livid, and said a simple, move. Them. Back. I replied with a knowing grin, I thought so. And so we moved them back. Along the same lines, after she finished redecorating the memorial table, M did something that still boggles my mind. I get that she's the mother of the bride, but there are some things that even the mother of the bride just should not do. This woman had the audacity to rearrange the head table, asterisk asterisk the head table. The centerpiece of the reception. The place where most of the photographs would be taken during the reception. The table that the bride had decorated in exactly the way she wanted it. Nope. M decided she could do it better. Who does that? Finally, to top off the night, M had one last trick up her sleeve. SD's one year old son and four year old daughter were going home with SD's dad, my hubby, and me to spend a week with us, while SD and her new hubby went on their honeymoon. It would be the first time for the little one to sleep over at our house. Because we knew it would be hard on him being someplace new in the first place, we wanted to make sure that he was actually tired and ready to sleep when we got home so hopefully he would crash instead of lying awake crying. Nope. M decided she knew better. 
She took the boy with her and sat down on a swinging bench, snuggled him up to her, and asterisk asterisk rockd. Him. To. Sleep. Asterisk asterisk it was about 8pm at that point, and we wouldn't be getting the kids home until around 10pm as it was, so having him sleep that close to bedtime meant he would never go back to sleep when it was time. I'd had enough. I'm surprised I was able to be kind, but I went up to her and said, we don't want him sleeping now, or he won't sleep when we get him home and duty, m, but he hasn't slept all day. Me, I realize that, but it's too close to bedtime now. He will be wide awake when he should be sleeping later. M, in a super fake, honey sweet voice, oh, I didn't know. Me, okay, well. I'm not good at confrontation, so I just started to walk away. Next thing I see is SD, looking angry and storming over toward Em and me. For a moment, I thought she was mad I had said anything to her mother. I should have known better, because next thing I know, she's walking up to me with baby boy in her arms, and she says jokingly, next time I have to tell off my mother and take my kid away from her, don't walk away. We laugh, and she hands me baby boy, who I snuggle with, but keep awake, until we pack up, and leave an hour or so later. M could then be found sulking on the bench swing, looking ever so sorry for herself after the tongue lashing I imagine SD gave her. Somehow, I couldn't make myself feel bad for her. As the saying goes, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. She played stupid games all day, and all she won was finding herself alone on a swing at the end of the day. Hey, you can't park in a normal spot. You have a handicap placard, you have to park in the handicap spot. TL, doctor at bottom. A long time ago, a friend of mine, Kaba, broke his left leg doing something stupid. It wasn't completely shattered, but he wasn't able to walk on it for quite a while. After some time, he got the go-ahead to drive from his doctor and got a temporary disabled parking permit for his car. At this point, he was using crutches. I went over to his place one day to hang out, read, play video games, and after a couple of hours, his wife called and asked how the shopping went. What shopping? Cabba asked. The dummy forgot that it was his turn to do the grocery shopping, not really much of an excuse. He had done it once already when on crutches, so, naturally, we stop playing and hop in his car to drive to the grocery store. As we're pulling into the parking lot, he goes for the front, I assume to park in the handicap spot. But he sees a regular spot open just next to the disabled spot and resigns to simply park there instead. He says, I'm not asterisk that asterisk disabled, a wheeler might need that spot. Hig, he's got this really weird high-pitched chuckle of a laugh, we get out of the car and all of a sudden this crazy lady in a car behind us starts honking and yelling. Hey. You can't park there. There's a disabled spot right there, she screamed. Thinking she was confused, I said, this is a normal parking spot, the disabled spot over there is free, if you need it. Apparently, crazy didn't like my assumption of her being disabled asterisk I apostrophe m asterisk not disabled, you retard, asterisk he asterisk is, pointing to Kaba, I can see the handicap placard in your car, you have to move to the handicap spot. There aren't any other spots nearby, and I have my kids with me, and they don't want to walk that far. Kaba looks slightly hurt by her words, but responds, ma'am, yes, I do have a handicap permit, but I don't asterisk h-a-v-e-t-o asterisk park in the handicap spot. I'm leaving it open, in case someone with a greater disability arrives, and needs to park, like someone in a wheelchair. That doesn't matter, she pouts. If you have a placard, you asterisk h-a-v-e asterisk to park there, it's the law. We were getting ready to just leave Crazy B when a cop car happened to enter the lot, fairly close to where we were. Crazy starts violently honking and flashing her lights to get the cop's attention, which she does as he flips on his lights and drives up to the area and gets out. What the hell's going on here, he demands. Crazy starts, officer, they're breaking the law. They're not parking in the handicap spot, but they have a handicap placard. 
The officer did the same thing I did, he assumed that she meant we were in the handicap spot without a placard. He turns to Kaba and says, you have a handicap placard, son? Yes, sir, I do. But, I'm not in a handicap spot. It's a normal parking spot. The officer looks at the spot and confirms that it is indeed a normal spot. He and Kaba quickly go over the events that transpired. The cop then goes to crazy. Ma'am, he doesn't have to park in the handicap spot just because he has a handicap placard. Now I suggest you take your kids and leave these boys alone and go on about your day, he says and stands there and waits for her to leave. She tries to say something, but the officer loudly says, have a nice day. Repeat three times. Crazy gets fed up and finally leaves, apparently without her groceries, since she left the whole lot. We both thank the officer, and he says, just don't mess that leg up again. I almost wish a wheelchair user would have come at one point to punctuate the matter, but unfortunately, that didn't happen in GT and LT, we got the shopping done and went home. We told the story to Cabba's wife when she got home and she said, that's what you get for forgetting to do the grocery shopping, asterisk asterisk tl, dr asterisk asterisk crazy mother is mad that we took a normal parking spot instead of a handicap spot, even though we have a handicap permit, so she and her kids would have had to have walked further, tries to get us in trouble with a nearby cop, cop tells her to piss off. Dad makes military grandpa cry. When I was younger I lived across the street from a girl who went to the same school as me, but we were in different classes. We still played together along with a few more kids in the neighborhood. The girl lived with her grandpa and mom. Her mom was going to school and working so she was hardly home, so her grandpa would be her main guardian. Her grandpa was a soldier who fought in Vietnam and had a few of his medals hung up in his old office. One thing her grandpa loved to do was bake, and whenever we played at the girl's house he would always have some baked good ready for us to snack on if we ever got hungry. So one we were playing, when this boy who neither of us have met, ran over to us, and asked if we could play with him, and we said yes. We never thought to ask where he came from, or where his parents were. So while we were playing the girl's grandpa comes out with these giant blueberry muffins, those were my most favorite, and we all got to have one and an extra to take home. So we sat on the back porch eating muffins with cups of milk, while the grandpa was telling us jokes. Out of nowhere this man comes over yelling the boy's name, and when he sees us, he starts to yell at the grandpa. Grandpa sends me, and the girl inside, and told the kid to go with his dad, but the dad wasn't gonna leave so easily. We were inside, so we didn't hear everything clearly, but we heard bits and pieces and words being thrown out like pedophile murderer and a few slurs that we didn't understand at the time. When the man finally left we heard him yell that he was gonna call the police on grandpa. When grandpa finally came inside he looked like he was trying not to cry, and when we asked if he was okay he just said he was tired and went to lay down. This man fought in a war, lost his wife to a drunk driver, and ended his life four years later at the age of 73. Tomorrow marks the anniversary of his death. I remember all the good memories and how good of a man he was. He raised my friend since she could walk, just so her mom can get a degree to better their life. I will always miss him. Ep doesn't like that I'm allergic to dogs. So little backstory. I live in Sweden and go to school with a bus every day. And I'm very allergic to dogs. So this one day I sat down on the bus in the corner with my backpack on my lab. And in the next stop there is Ep with her dog coming towards me very quickly. I didn't have time to leave this seat. So I asked Ep to give me some space to go out, this is how the conversation went me, sorry, can I get out, because I'm very allergic to dogs. Ep, stop it silly boy it's just a dog you can pet him if you want. Me, no ma'am I can get very much feber and some other sickness when I'm close to dogs I need to get out at this point there are many people watching us Ep, come on why, do you need to lie such thing no one can be that allergic to dogs. Me, well I'm so let me go Ep, no. You can't geo just pet my dog and sit down. 
Me, no f you asterisk k you. I am starting to get some serious itching on my body right now so let me geo or I will make my way to that damn door. The bus driver comes to us bd, what is happening here? Ep, this boy is assaulting my dog and me. Me, no I don't, I am allergic to dogs and this crazy bitch will not let me geo out of this goddamn bus. BD, calm down, ma'am give this guy little space, so that he can come out of the bus. Ep gives me space me, finally thank you I give my number to the bus driver, so he can watch the footage, if I have assaulted that bitch, and call me, if I have so that's the story I had very bad allergic reaction after that, and avoid to go to the corner seat. Thank you for reading I know my English is not so good, but I tried to write this as best as I can. Your t-shirt is scaring my son. I was taking a bus a little while ago, and I was wearing a Pennywise top from it. And all the way from across the bus I could feel this woman staring at me. I wondered what part of me she would have a problem with. I have piercings and bright hair, so I'm used to being stared at in a small town. Next thing I know she stands up leaving her son on the seat next to her and storms over to me on the busy moving bus fighting though people. I take my headphones out ahead of time because I knew something was coming. She looks me up and down and suddenly demands I back quote change my shirt or put a coat on or something I just stare at her dumbfounded. Apparently my clown t-shirt was scaring her precious son. Yet when I look over he is happily looking out the window without a care in the world. I explain to her that I can't just back quote change on a busy bus and I don't have anything to change into. She looks angrily at me and was about to say something else when the guy next to me backs me up telling her to back quote, go back to her seat and stop harassing the girl I thought that was the end of it, but as we got to the station I heard her having a go at the driver about letting undesirable people on the bus and how I threatened her and her son. Luckily the driver didn't care or believe her and there's CCTV anyway. TL, doctor, entitled mother demanded I change on a bus then claims I threatened her to drive her, M wants 23 year old op, to be the flower girl at wedding. F in the chat for the title. I meant C's wedding, and I can't change it. So, in case you're just meeting me, my name is Radchix. I'm 23, a college dropout, and awaiting my millions. I'm kidding, I work for above minimum wage and that's fine. My cousin, C, is 36. She had two kids, boys, from a previous marriage and loves them. So, here's the cast. Me, sexy of Nem, entitled mother, or in my case entitled aunt. B1, boy 1, C son. B2, boy 2, C son. CH, C's future husband. Me and C we are talking about her wedding. C isn't very traditional, so she wanted one of her sons to be the ring bearer and the other it be the flower boy. I loved this idea, and we started looking into outfits. Apparently, M caught wind of this and was horrified. Almost all the adults in my family are super traditional. M gave me weird looks for the next few days. I finally had enough, and asked her what was up. M, B1 shouldn't be the flower boy. There should be a flower, girl, me, it's C's wedding. Just let her do her thing, Nkaj. M, why don't you be the flower girl? You're the youngest girl. Me, Auntie M, I'm 23. I'm allowed to drink. There's no way in hell I'm doing that. M is clearly angry, but she stomps away. I think the problem is over, and go back to my talk. Too bad she wasn't done. M told everyone that I disrespected her wishes and was going to ruin C's wedding. I was hurt since I love C and if she had asked me to be a flower girl, I would've tossed those petals like a ref asterisk 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 ing boss. CH heard that I was feeling uneasy about upsetting my aunt and he reassured me that what I did was the best choice and that I'd put my cousin before myself. The wedding is scheduled for Saturday, this all took place weeks ago, and the wedding was originally planned last year. I'll update you then, if M tries to pull anything, but I doubt that. For now my precious second cousin will be flower boy. EA wanted my iPhone 6s plus saying you're too young to have that kind of phone. 
Okay just me, EA, mom backstory, the iPhone amusing now, to type this story, in was from my mom, it's a hand me down phone, but I still love it nonetheless, but every time there would be a family gathering every first Saturday of June, EA would always ask where I got my phone from, and why I have a phone this expensive in the first place, now, an iPhone 6s plus is literally worth 25k to 15k pesos here in the Philippines, so not really that surprising, I keep telling her that I got it from my mom and it's not really expensive, but she would always pull the don't talk back to your eldest thing, even though she is asking me how or why I have this phone every single family gathering, for 3 years I have this phone and I love it. Actual story, while we had the gather last June this year, EA and her son, who is really cool and chill, were just talking about stuff, and when she saw me, she rushed over to me, and literally just puts her hand out, and said give me the phone now I'm no I'm not listen to me, you spoiled little brat, yes I'm spoiled due to the fact I get work done, you don't deserve this phone or the other stuff you have. Why? Because you keep fucking every girl you meet in school, and getting them pregnant. Whoa there. I don't even have a girlfriend yet. Stop lying you brat. Give me the phone now, or I'll tell your mom. Go ahead then she then goes to my mom, while I chat with CC, cool cousin, then they both go to us, and then my mom asked me is it true? Is it true, that you punched your own aunt? Me and CC looked at each other like back quote WTF. Then before I can even speak EA says yes it's true, right CC you saw him punched me. CC no he didn't even lay a finger on you, you just wanted his phone mommy A, when we get back home you will be punished mom don't even try and punish your own son for saying the truth, I can't believe that you would lie to your sister in law, dad side, EA he doesn't deserve that phone. Mom and that makes you deserve of his, or any other phone. Just leave if you're going to be like this EA I'll tell your husband that you guys hate me and always hurt me me in my head yo my dad is literally behind us, why the fuck would you say something like that? Then she left and everybody in my dad's side apologized to us, they said that she had been like that for years and that they keep telling her to stop but she doesn't. TL, doctor, aunt wanted my phone saying I don't deserve it, she got kicked from the gathering slash reunion, 